Hello and welcome to Aggressive Mastery. I'm Mike Bernhausen. I wanted to do a quick tutorial as one of the Reddit fellows asked for it, and I think that's a good idea. I couldn't find a tutorial on how to uh, convert instant static meshes to be flipbook animations, which I'm using so that you can get all nanite in a scene pretty cheap. And that's what you're seeing on screen here now. Uh, all these marching guys out here are just being 16 baked out animations as static meshes that are nanite enabled. And I'm telling that ISM, here's this uh, new mesh, update it every so often frames. And you can define that on your animations. What that lets us do is that when we're far away from AI, like those ones I was just on, they're converted back into these meshes that are just being moved forward in space. And I'll go through these blueprints, but this is just that overview before we go through the blueprints. So when I get far away from the AI, they get turned into mindless uh, instant static meshes. And when I get close here, they'll be converted into ALS AI. You can see there the kind of the conversion you don't see at full speed. And then they're doing their AI stuff. If I uh, jump up and go down and smash on the ground, they'll ragdoll, and then that ragdoll will convert into another instant static mesh being extremely cheap. You're also seeing something a little bit weird with these ragdolls, so to speak, which is that I've split up the uh, mesh itself into smaller meshes and attached those to the root bones for the arms, legs, head, and so on, so that the skeletal mesh can be hidden and we'll still get nanite uh, representations of the animations done below. And I'll briefly go over that as well. I will link a video I found in the comments that I believe goes through that process. So we'll just be doing the uh, instant static mesh flipbooking. Boom. And I'm also going to bake this out so that rather than doing the actual simulation and AI conversion here for the ragdolls, We'll just play another one of these ISM flipbooks of a ragdoll uh, death animation. And then flying through these crowds should become uh, very seamless and fluid. Alright, let's go ahead and stop the game here and look at the blueprints. First off, we'll look at spawning blue, the uh, AI in, or rather, let's just look at the world. It's called Logan's World. My son was helping me build this. And what you see here is each grouping of AI is a uh, blueprint I have that in the construction script just spawns AI in a squared amount based on your value. So these are each, I think, 100 instances. And right now it's the first mesh, or has been assigned the first mesh of the 16 meshes of the flipbook. And I have uh, a, um, sorry, I normally work on a 4K. I have 15 of them, so we have a 1.5K instances in the world right now, I would guess. I think I shared the details. Oh, 250. Now you'll see my math's going to be a little weird. So more than that. Uh, for a 1.5k, that's like 7k or something. Oh, I'm horrible. Well, let's look at the blueprints. I like pretty colors. All right, so uh, on the begin start of blueprint, this is where you're saying uh, we're going to animate it. So it's going to get the first animation uh, frame count. And we're going to actually set the time, how long it's going to take to animate here. So this is where, depending on what you're doing, I have 16 frames, I'm making them walk, so they're only animating every two seconds through the full loop. So I'm actually going to do, what, seven frames a second, and this sets that up. We move over and cast to the game mode, because I'm storing the game mode, because I have some common variables across all these different blueprints, meaning AI count, that I'm going to reference later, so that's why I'm grabbing that. I then go ahead and make the ISMs cheap by turning off all collision because we don't need anything in the world right now for these uh, marching groups. We're going to use a get all overlapping instances. And so you can turn off everything on the instances in the world, which I have here. Then on every tick, each one of the crowds themselves are moving forward in the world. So what you're seeing here is I'm taking and I'm just applying an offset to the instant static mesh actor or the, actually I think the instance itself. Because we're doing that get overlapping act uh, instances, uh, I'm just marching this thing forward, it will march right through anything. So that's where what you do comes into mind here. I put a little note that 
you could attach this instance to an actual AI agent and just make that agent have a really large width to it or size. And then when it bumps into uh, anything, it could reduce in size, turn the external instances outside of that overlap into agents so they can navigate around the obstacle and then recombine them, which is what I'll be doing later. <clears throat> So we march forward that instance of uh, instances here every second, just that's the AI, the movement. And we set a limiting rate on there just so I don't do this every frame. And then what we do is once we've made it back through that tick, we have to move it every frame for smoothness, but we're moving the, uh, changing the instances right here. So we'll come through on whenever it's good for a next instance to be changed, which we've set up above based on our animation rate. And then we come through here, we pick the, we advanced our index out of an array that stores our individual meshes. And that's this array here, uh, my head's covering, where I have my 16 baked out meshes. I'll show you how we bake those out. So basically we're just flip booking through every amount of seconds between an update to your animation on the ISM you need. When we're not doing that, when we're not doing an update to the ISM, I'm choosing on those other frames to go ahead and check and see if we're close to the player, which is what we're doing here every so often, and convert instances that are near my player into AI actors by doing the instance overlapping sphere. And then um, what we do is we say, okay, are we gonna, do we have enough instances We'll go ahead and loop through all the instances. When we get to an instance, we're going to gather its placement in the world so we can convert it to an actor or an AI actor. But before that, this is where we're referencing our game mode variable that's shared between all these uh, spawn bot spawners to see if we have a too many bots in the world, in which case we won't spawn another one. We'll leave it an instance. And this is really to help with performance. So you don't spawn an unlimited amount of bots, but you just spawn a certain amount. What will happen is that certain amount will mean that if you walk into a crowd and you already have too many, that crowd won't respond to you. So you got to manage turning things, that, that crowd pool. So we get the instant stack mesh location or transform. We go ahead and spawn an AI class there, store information about the AI class using some calls you'll see later. And then we're going to delete that instance, which we do right down here. So once we've looped through, and we have a break on this loop in case we spawn too many AI and we don't want to delete an instance. So you're going to store a separate array of instances to delete. And then when you're done with the loop, you go ahead and delete those instances. And what you want to also make to, to make sure to do is not to try and delete the last instance in an instance, because that will cause an error. If that is what you're trying to do, go ahead and do a clear instances instead. So there we've managed to have our instance stack mesh be updated every frame just to move across the world. Then we'll update from that movement across the world in every in a time frame the animated mesh or the static mesh for a walking animation in that same direction. When we're not updating animations, we're also going to go ahead and look and see if we are near a player and if, if, if any of those instances using an overlapping sphere of our instances are near a player component, in which case we'll convert that to AI to a limit stored in the game mode. And, we tr and here's the add and remove of the tracks there. And that's the big part on the spine. Then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the AI itself. On the AI itself, uh, the begin play, what you're seeing here is a whole bunch of set static meshes as attached to the component to a skeletal mesh socket. So that's where I went through everywhere on that skeleton and added a socket to the main bones. And then went ahead and have here a bunch of aesthetic meshes, which we can look at. So here's the T-pose skeleton and also the T-pose static mesh. I took that T-pose static mesh and sliced it up into, I should be able to move them way out of the transforms down there, into pieces like this. The arms, arm, foot, you know, that match where the uh, breaks are in the skeleton. And I did that for, for as much as I wanted to so that I can do dismemberment 
And also, I split it so that I can actually split the player in half if I want to with skeletal mesh, or with a static mesh. So you can see here. And then the funny part is for the other side, I did this on one side, I just did a negative Z or negative X here and mirrored the mesh over and attached those other bones. When you're doing the attachment to the bones, you want to make sure you keep the world placement and that will allow the mesh, even though it's pivot, when you splice it up, the original pivot is way down at the bottom. It will keep the location attached to the bone when you use keep world. And so with that, this mesh mech, this mess here is just adding those static meshes to those individual bones so that the animation on the AI close to the player is also nanite. And you can also turn off a collision on it and stuff because it's a visual representation, which is what we did. And I also did the same thing for the gun, which is what you're seeing here. There was only one extra static mesh so that the gun can be changed out at any point in time to any other type of skeletal, uh, static mesh and be attached to the original skeletal mesh that was part of that character. Every tick, or well, in ragged all the time. Uh, so we did our startup here. <clears throat> the AI can basically have two states right now, shooting the player and ragdolling to death. Uh, the player will determine if they ragdoll to death by impacting them or being near them currently. And shooting is being determined down below on a tick, which we'll have right here. So on event tick, uh, set rate I have to limit how much is happening. We'll see if we're ragdolling, because if we're ragdolling, we don't want to shoot. We'll get the player location, we'll get the AI lo gun location, and we'll get the location of the AI component. We'll do a trace to see if we are close enough to the AI. If we're over 2,000 away from the AI, we'll go ahead and convert back into a, one of those marking static instances, saving compute and also you know getting, back, uh, getting us back cheap, basically. If we are within range, we'll go ahead and fire a ray to the player and see if that ray hits the player. If it hits the player and nothing else, you know, the first thing hits is the player, then we'll go ahead and draw a debug line for our current visual that the, the shot works. Uh, if we are too far away, we'll then do a line trace to the ground and uh, so we get a good ground placement and add ourselves back to the marching uh, bot ISM and delete the AI actor. What you have up here, one call is in ragdoll time. When the player, so we'll go to the player controller here. Every tick, the player, or every one, ten, every ten times a second, the player controller is ticking based on the pawn location that it is, and it's checking to see if that pawn is in flight or running. If it's in flight, flying around or running, it's going to knock down the uh, AI that it spawns at different radiuses, what you see right here. It's basically a larger radius if it's going fast or, or landing hard on the ground. Otherwise, a smaller radius if it's just flying through the crowd will be converted into AI. And knocked down, I think. Yeah, ragdolls. And then we set in here uh, how long that character will ragdoll before being converted to a dead instance mesh that doesn't ragdoll anymore. And that's all about just getting some character animation there. We'll see how much of that gets to stick around. Um, and I, this is just where I convert between, this backspace is just how I convert between the advanced locomotive or system pawn and the flight pawn. It's just that simple. Uh, this will be all multiplayer and all that other stuff. That's why these uh, blueprints look so bad. I mean, I just went through into, hopefully they're not too bad because I just went through and, through and did a decent cleanup on them. Um, and so let me talk finally about how you bake out stuff make static mesh right here in the animation so go ahead and pause the animation preview in Unreal and just hit make static mesh and just save them out 1 through 16 uh, you can go ahead and just move drag this to move them to placements and so what I did was I took there's 66 frames in the walking animation I'm working with divided that by the 15 frames I wanted per second to give me about four frames of spacing, spaced them out on those four frames across the bottom here and baked each of those out. You don't have to be super precise, but make sure if you have like a, a landing point or where you're touching something that you get that frame and then base everything off of it so that they are all uh, consistent to each other. 
All right, well, thanks for giving me, t hanging out with me for what do we do here? 15 minutes. And let's just fly around with a nanite view on just to prove nanite overview. What's going on here? One last time. Oh, and this is a, celebra a celebration tutorial. If you suck out to the end, Tim Sweeney uh, likes the destruction I'm doing where I'm destroying the entire uh, matrix. And that's what you're going to be able to do in this game is uh, fly around through all the buildings and all that stuff. Uh, so this is kind of like a little uh, celebratory tutorial that one of my heroes, one of the biggest, one of my heroes, one of the biggest heroes in video games, video game development, oh shit. So you know what's up. That's an amazing thing. Um, please come check me out on um, Game Dev Micah. It's amazing. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. You could make crowds with what's going on here easily for uh, you know setting up any animations. The movement is the hard part. You know having these guys march around, tie them to uh, AI as a big group. But I'll put a hopefully put a video out for that next. <laughs> Ciao.